Sony has asked for a second opinion. This is the RX-10 II. I'm not sure what was in Prescription 10, but this time it seems like what the doctor ordered. The RX-10 II takes pro-quality images and video, even if you're a novice. So I'll try and keep this a little less technical. Let me show you what Sony's offering here. The 24 megapixel one inch sensor delivers sharp, clear and detailed images inside and out on sunny and gray days with rich colors and good contrast. Portraits, food, landscapes, all perfectly exposed. The 10 times zoom gets you close to the action. 4K video is brilliant, like looking out a window. The Zeiss lens zooms fairly smoothly, focuses fast, and the stabilization makes this handheld panning shot look like it was taken with a tripod. Ambient audio has a wide frequency range with lots of nuance and detail, free of camera operating handling sounds. And all of that in auto mode, which I found suited my needs for the majority of photos in this video. The RX-10 is easy and foolproof enough to make photography fun. More advanced features like HDR, black and white, and picture effects are part of the easily accessed creative feature set. Not that this is only a camera for beginners. In fact, there's very little that a still or video pro would find lacking in the RX-10 II's capabilities. This camera has the smarts and the power to take your photography and videography to just about any level as your creativity beckons and your skills increase. Want slow motion at 10, 20, or 40 times slow? Want to shoot stills at 14 shots per second? Download apps to your camera like your phone? The RX-10 does that, and I'll get to those features, but let's back up for a second. While I have great respect for Sony technology, the design of Sony cameras has been primarily utilitarian. Not here. The RX-10 II is quite a handsome device. And Sony did not skimp on this nicely appointed camera. A viewfinder, info panel, integrated flash and flash shoe, audio in and out, Wi-Fi, every need is covered for shooting formal or informal portraits, concerts, architecture, and getting your photos to social media. It's slightly small for my hands and yet quite comfortable. The exterior looks sleek and curvy. It feels solid and precision manufactured. Grippy surfaces for my fingers, an articulated LCD for high and low angles, but not selfies. I'll show you the remote control workaround for that in a minute. The unexpected info panel on top, a nice pro feature to keep track of battery status, remaining photos, and exposure settings. Big glass on this lens with a 62 millimeter filter diameter. That lets in lots of light. And while most cameras lose light as you zoom in, the RX-10 II maintains a constant aperture controlled by this very pro ring, although it's only active when the mode dial is at A or aperture priority or M manual settings. But whether you choose to use it or not, the benefits are always there. There's a focus switch beside the lens, S for single exposure, although rest assured that even if you don't, the RX-10 will manage this setting for you. Compose, soft press the shutter until one or more squares turn green, then press all the way to take the picture. Green auto mode identifies the image in the top left. Spotlight, landscape, portrait, close up, night. It can even tell that I'm using a tripod. Or turn the mode dial one click to scene mode. The selected scenes offer additional assistance for specific situations. Turn the back dial and the selected scene appears top left. Until you get familiar, press FNE, use the cursor control pad to highlight the icon in the bottom right, and then press the center button. Like portrait with face detection, each has special powers. Sports, for example, turns on burst mode, taking multiple images while the shutter button is held down. Or handheld twilight, combining multiple exposures into a single image in a poorly lit setting. There is one scene type with its own dial setting, panorama. Click and pan to take a wide angle image. Menu tab 1 screen 2 selects between standard and wide. Like auto mode, scene exposure is automatically set, which is not perfect. Although spotlight mode is an auto scene, there's no spotlight scene here, 
which leaves some white faces. Portrait mode turns face detection on, which sets both exposure and focus for the selected face. To use face detection in other modes, use menu tab 1, screen 6. When a face is detected, a white square appears, but it's not totally reliable. For even more control, and to access settings like black and white or effects, turn the dial to P, which is still an auto exposure mode. In P, turn the top dial to make exposure adjustments if the image seems too dark or light. Minus 2, displayed at the bottom of the screen, is a better setting for Mackenzie's performance. Although the RX-10 sets the exposure automatically, you can give it guidance. Turning the back dial displays other possible combinations. When the number at the bottom is small, like 2.8, backgrounds are softer focus. It's a subtle change, so it's easy to miss, but when we change to P, focus mode, change from wide to center spot. Use the FNU menu to change it back. If there is no detected face, wide takes more of the image into consideration. If you've noticed the lock on AF prompt, press the center button to activate and select the spot to follow. Works rather well, I think. Hmm. Even zoomed in all the way to 200 millimeters, the zoom isn't getting me very tight. Tab 2 screen 3 enables clear image zoom, which doubles the reach with a slight loss of quality. Select digital for four times even lower quality. The zoom bar, top right, shows when you cross the line from optical to clear image. As you cross the line, face detection is no longer available. At this point, the display starts to look a little grainy, but not the photographs. To make sure we don't miss the best expressions, use the FNU menu, which is fully available in P, to change the drive mode, top left, enabling continuous or burst mode. With these settings, it's taking about six pictures per second. That should be lots to choose from. In the bottom row of the FNU menu, Creative Style has color adjustments. Spin the control dial or press the center to select from a scrolling menu. Black and white sets a nice mood for musical performances. These are settings that enhance the look of specific kinds of photos. The effect of the setting is visible on the screen, and there are 13 to choose from. As you get comfortable with this setting, press right on the control dial to adjust specific parameters. On a dull overcast day, increasing the contrast may be useful, or reducing the sharpness will soften detail in skin. Lots of combinations are possible. Some of the effects are too subtle to be seen on the little screen. Experimentation is key to mastering this feature. You might occasionally find a photo that you swear you didn't take. That's thanks to Auto Object Framing, tab 1, page 7. Using face detection, it decides that there's a better picture hiding in your photograph. It typically adds a rotated portrait view to a landscape image. If you have an exact focus point in mind, there are more focus area options accessed from FNA. Flexible spot, press left and right for sizes small, large, medium, select and then use the control dial to move the spot. Face detection should also be a focus mode. I've added it to my custom FNA menu, I'll show you how later. In face detection, turn on smile. Normal, big, or slight. There's a smile meter on the side of the screen and pictures are taken when smiles are detected. That can be fun. Oh, in registered face mode, saved faces are prioritized. Tab to screen 5 to register faces. Whichever focus mode you choose, it's fast and locks on without hunting. Up to now, I've been using the LCD screen, but don't overlook the viewfinder. It's bright, clear, and fully electronic, displaying all the same on-screen indicators as the LCD. You'll see a real preview of the image, and then a quick view of the picture taken afterwards. The viewfinder is easier to see on a sunny day. It aids composition and stability. It also makes it easier to find your subject at full zoom. If the screen is too cluttered, Press DISP at the top of the control dial to display with more or less information. 
One screen includes a horizontal level, which I find useful. There are several more display options. On tab 2 screen 2, the disk button settings customizes the screen's displayed as the button is pressed. If you don't use the histogram, turn it off. There are independent settings for viewfinder and monitor. Tab 6 screen 1 to change monitor brightness. Sunny weather is useful on bright days. One more. The RX10 switches to a viewfinder display as it senses your face approach, but it is easily confused blacking out the screen inadvertently, which can be frustrating. Tab 2 screen 4 locks the display on one or the other. Next to creative style is picture effect. Some really interesting effects. Some are fairly simple, like Instagram filters, and as you scroll down the list, some, like selective color, have arrows. Use the top dial to select more options, like other colors, for this setting. Everything up to this point also works for video recording. Just press the red button instead of the shutter button to record. The RX-10 can shoot stills and video at the same time. Press the shutter button during recording and you'll see the capture, top left while it's saving. Also note on screen left that in video, the focus mode changed to AFC, autofocus continuous. Did you notice that it just captured when I didn't press the shutter button? It's the auto dual record, tab one screen seven setting. On by default, it has three frequency settings and can be turned off. It managed to get some nice pictures of Steven while I was busy videoing. By default, the RX-10 records video in full HD, and there is nothing wrong with that. But the RX-10 is capable of 4K, with twice as many horizontal and vertical pixels, that's four times the resolution. Full HD is the equivalent of a 2 megapixel image, 4K is the same as 8 megapixels, so rather than blowing up these pixels to fill the screen, 4K records all the information required. It's gorgeous, great detail and color purity, but a 4K TV is needed to appreciate that. Menu tab 1 screen 2 to change the file format to 4K. Nothing wrong with 3060, but the best quality is 30p100. No one cares if zoom is smooth while shooting stills, but it's critical to video. To help smooth it out, the zoom speed slows while you're recording. But still, I find the little lever is just not sensitive enough. It starts and stops with halty little steps. The ring on the lens is better, but still not perfect. Tab 2 screen 3 can make the zoom faster, but sadly not slower. And remember what I said about taking photos while shooting video? Not in 4K. There is one situation where you might prefer Full HD for handheld shots that are feeling kind of shaky. The menu has three steady shot modes, but Active and Intelligent Active are not available in 4K. When shooting with a tripod, set it to off. If you go back to HD, either for steady shot or stills, use the second setting on the file format screen. It's higher quality than the others. When recording continuously, be aware that the RX-10 will silently stop just before 30 minutes. If you press record, it starts recording again. In conditions that typically overheat other models, the RX-10 did not. A fully charged battery records for slightly over an hour. Video pros will want to turn the mode dial to movie, which changes the screen layout to video aspect and enables other functionality. Movie modes are selected from the FNA menu. And for pros, manual is the way to go. Use the back dial to set the shutter to 1 60th. Larger shutter speeds make for odd looking movies. Use the ring on the lens to set the aperture, 2.8 for a defocused background. These can both be adjusted while recording. Turn the click switch on the bottom side of the lens to off to make the aperture changes more subtle while recording. Auto ISO bottom right means the camera is still controlling the exposure even in manual. Use the FNU menu to set the ISO. 
Now the EV dial is out of commission with a meter taking its place, showing about the same level of underexposure that we had set with the EV dial. Pros will want to use Zebra to check exposure and Peking to check focus. They'll likely appreciate the ND filter, very useful to create a soft background when shooting in bright conditions. Pros will also be interested in picture profiles, tab 1, screen 6. They work for stills but are really video centric. Profile 7 has particular appeal as it records using Sony's Pro Camera S Log 2 setting. It looks dull on screen but captures a wide dynamic range and is designed to be adjusted while editing. It's most useful outside in bright conditions. How wide is that dynamic range? Slightly techy, but bear with me, here's the chart. The furthest left rectangle is pure white, continuing to the right each is one half the brightness. Standard setting 7, maybe 8 are visible. Switch to profile 7, 12, maybe 13. The Chroma Dumont chart illustrates the variation in colors as well. For you and I, off is, of course, perfectly acceptable. After reading Sony's explanations available online, 3 and 4 are slight variations on TV or video color standards, 5 and 6 are closer to cinema settings. Now, back to effects. Among my favorites are HDR painting with low, medium and high settings, watercolor, and illustration, also with three intensities. You may have noticed that the display shows the effect before taking the photo until we got to HDR painting. It appears a few seconds after the image is taken. And you may be wondering what HDR painting looks like as a video, although video will record the first seven effects. For the remaining, an unaffected video is recorded, just so you know. Sadly, that means no video for the miniature setting. And I've sometimes forgotten to take the camera out of effect mode, so now I turn effects off before turning the camera off, otherwise I forget it's on. And for as much as I like the effects, I would like to have a version of the image without them, but turning the effect on and off requires scrolling through the effect list back to off. There is a shortcut, but first I'll need to customize the FNU or function menu. Tab 2, screen 5. Here are all the function options for line 1 and line 2. Quick trick, if you turn all the items on line 2 to not set, a simpler one-line FNU menu is displayed. Choose an infrequently used item, for me it's flash mode, and change it to quality. While we're here, set function upper 3 to face detection. By default, the camera saves images as JPEG files using a setting called Fine. It's, well, fine. But like video, there's a higher quality setting called XFine. And settings with RAW, a file type that enables a wide range of adjustments after shooting. This is not the time to explain all that, but RAW and effects are incompatible. So if you switch to RAW plus J, the effect is turned off. And two files are saved, the standard JPEG file as well as a RAW file. Switching to RAW Plus and then back is the easiest way in and out of effects, and that's easiest when quality is on the FNU menu. Even if you ignore all this, leave the quality setting at XFine using Tab 1, Screen 1. Picture profiles are useful for video, but even in stills, the sky can be too white or shadows can be too dark. Use FNU to access the DRO, Dynamic Range Optimization setting. There's DRO, but HDR, High Dynamic Range, combines multiple exposures to extract extra detail in the dark areas of bright scenes. The RX-10 takes several snaps when you press the shutter. Although the 6EV setting can seem extreme, it does reveal detail that's otherwise not seen. I promised slow motion, and here's how that's styled. Turn the dial to HFR, High Frame Rate, Tab 1, Screen 2, HFR Settings, between record setting and frame rate, the six combinations will go from 4 times at 60 and 240, change 60 to 24 to go to 10 times, 240 to 960 to go to 40 times. After making the selection, press menu to exit, press the center button to enter standby, press the movie button to start recording. There's buffering, and then recording, 
as the frames are saved into a movie file. Press play to review your handiwork. Quality records for 2 seconds, which takes 80 seconds to play at 40 times. If 2 seconds is too short, time records 4 seconds for 160 second playback length at lower quality. There's no audio in HFR modes and in all modes it's less than true HD quality. And 960 frames isn't quite fast enough for a balloon pop. Here's a hidden slow motion solution. On tab 1 screen 2, set file format to the second setting and then record setting to 120. Compared to the cinema frame rate of 24, that's up to 5 times slow motion, but the speed will have to be adjusted in editing software. Granted, it's not the extreme slow speeds offered by HFR, but it does have audio and uses full HD quality. So you know. Although some may see the inability to change lenses as a shortcoming, I'm going to disagree. First, this lens is highly capable. Good zoom ratio, constant aperture, excellent macro capability. At the closest focus, the horizontal measurement is 60 millimeters. I shot the close-ups for another camera view with the RX10 M2. I'm usually only able to do that with a dedicated macro lens. There's no single lens in Sony's interchangeable lens portfolio to match all that. Sony's not finished challenging our creative impulses yet. Remember this screen from when the camera was first turned on? It's the URL for Sony's Play Memories Store for free and inexpensive apps which extend the camera's functionality even further, for the technically adept and adventurous anyway. Use your computer or download directly to the camera. Yes, the screen doesn't rotate for selfies, but download the Sony Play Memories app to your phone or tablet, use tab 4 to launch applications, and select Smart Remote. On the phone, select the network, enter the password, launch the app. On your mobile device, you can zoom in, touch to focus, and snap. Cool, huh? The Play Memories app on your phone or tablet also receives images sent by the camera. Press play and find the image. Press FNE and select this image. On the phone, select the camera's Wi-Fi network and enter the password as shown. Then go to the Play Memories app on the phone. Download starts automatically. There's a lot that you can customize on tab 2 screen 5. Most Sony cameras have the four points of the control dial labeled with defaults. Maybe it's too confusing for novices, but I configured the settings I already know. Left for drive, right for ISO, but that's only slightly simpler than using the FNE menu. There's a separate card slot door, but it's small, and the card inserts backwards, so I can't get a fingernail on the card's recessed edge to get it out. Just awkward. For 4K video, use an SDXC card with the U3 designation. There are a few nice odds and ends I didn't get to, but other than turning the card slot around, what's my wish list for the RX10 III? More control for the zoom, settings to ease in and out, a touchscreen with tap, focus, and snap, spotlight scene, and more flexible exposure zones. For features and functions, the RX10 II is nearly identical to the RX104, although 4K video on the 104 is limited to 5 minutes. For me, it's really the lens that sells the RX10 II, manually controlled wide constant aperture, versatile zoom, and great macro capability. Then, Sony's technology leadership in areas from downloadable apps to picture profiles seal the deal. Pretty sure you and your doctor will be happy.